Our last activity for this semester is putting it all together. Putting it all together is in essence your exam 3 review. Exam 3 will be taken during finals week. This activity requires students to be able to process what is being asked of them. If you look at the screen right now, it has a lot of things that are being asked. Paper pricing, ink coverage, press impressions. I've broken it down into a step-by-step -step process so you do not have to remember okay this step comes after that step but you do have to recognize which formula to use and when what's going to be very important is that when you come up with an answer you include a description of that answer if your answer is 10,000 sheets write sheets next to it if it's 450,000 postcards write postcards next to it because as we move down from the top to the bottom of the sheet we'll be able to pull answers from previously answered questions if you don't write down a description, it's impressions, it's dollars, it's hours on press, you'll have a difficult time pulling out the answers that you need. There are two problems on this practice, putting it all together. However, there are 52 questions that are being asked. What you're going to do when you're ready to give this a try is you're going to download the PDF and print it out. I've color coded it. I'm going to quickly move through the PDF. The first one is blue and it goes through and asks you all the questions. This is just an answer sheet. You're not actually going to do your work on this sheet. And then problem two is green so you can differentiate between the two. If I move on down the PDF, at the back there are scratch work areas. One for problem one and it asks the same exact questions that problem one asks. And then eventually I'll get to problem two which apparently I forgot to change so I'll change that on your, uh, on your PDF that's posted on Canvas. So let's go through how you should tackle this. Um, this video will not actually go through any answers, it's just to help you feel more comfortable with the material. The, the paragraph that's in blue says, problem one, your company is going to print 250,000 11 by 17 inch wall posters. They print four over zero CMYK over no ink on 100 pound cover stock. Ink coverage is 35% for cyan, 82% for magenta, 11% for yellow, 9% for black. The ink is priced at $6 per pound for all colors, and the ink coverage or the ink spread for all colors is 20,000 inches squared per pound. You must purchase and use 19 by 25 sheets of paper. The paper is priced at $89 a hundredweight, and this job will run on the Man Roland 300 press at 11,000 impressions per hour. The BHR, or the budgeted hourly rate for the press, is $347 per hour. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a lot of information to take in all at once. What I would do is I would completely skip that paragraph, and I wouldn't read it. And I would go down to paper pricing, question one, how many 11 by 17 inch wall posters will fit out on your press size sheet? If I can recognize that in order to calculate number out, I need my press size sheet, and my object size, which is 11 by 17, the only thing that's missing is my press size sheet. So then I would go back up to the problem and I would scan through it and find the paper size, which is 19 by 25, and it's listed right here. If you read all of that paragraph at once, it might become overwhelming. But if you look at it in terms of question one, what information do I need? Let me write down that formula, and the information I'm missing is the sheet size. And the PSS is the press sheet size, it's the size that will run through the printing press, and it is always the larger sheet size. So I have 11 by 17 and 19 by 25. I cannot print something that's 19 by 25 on 11 by 17, so I have to be able to recognize that 19 by 25 is the sheet size. When you're done with question one, you can move on to question two, three, and four, etc. But what I'd like to ask of you is that instead of doing your work here or even trying to do it in your head, write it down on the supplied scratch work area portion of the PDF. That way, if you have to go back to it, you can reference it. And also, if you do this on the actual exam and you get something wrong, I can go back and see where you went wrong and give you partial credit. If you give me a blank scratch work area uh, sheet of paper, I can't give you any partial credit. It's either right or it's wrong. If you have any questions on how the actual PDF works, please shoot me a message through the inbox um, or contact me during online chat hours, my in-class office hours, or you can even come to class. Uh, we meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays. 
um, and you're welcome to come. Even if you're on the in-class, uh, the online version of the class, you're still welcome to come to the in-class version if you have any questions or you'd like to participate in our review periods.